That's what, that's what we're talking about in asset hacking. And really what it is, we're just reverse engineering an image. So we're going to break an image down into visual building blocks that we can then take and generate a thousand more pieces of creative from it. So it's good because it keeps your images consistent so you can keep a brand look and feel. You know, the relevance is really what's important there. So just a little disclaimer, please don't use this on other people's brands. Just, just use it on your own. <laughs> so this is the process. Essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to collect our assets. Then we're going to use the describe function in mid-journey. Then we're going to fine tune this in chat GPT. Then we're going to go back to mid-journey and use an image prompt. Then we're going to iterate. But sounds like a lot. I'm going to walk through this step by step so you guys can see the progression. So first we're going to organize our assets. This is Red Bull, if you, if you can uh, see that on the screen. But they're not a client of mine. I'm just using this for example, of pur for example purposes. Essentially, you know, they have very iconic imagery. And you know, to be honest, their stuff just kicks ass. So I wanted to use it. But looking at this, you can see they all have like a very unique visual signature. There's a lot of contrast. It's a, you know, the, the colors really pop. The composition's a little bit interesting. So we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into a thousand other pictures that look just like this, right? Now, see that F1 car at the top? Now we're going to go to the describe function in mid-journey. We're going to run this. Now, what is describe? Describe essentially takes your image and turns it into text. So when you run the describe function, how you do it is you type backslash describe. Then from there, you paste your image in. You hit enter, and it generates four prompts. So those four unique prompts, it'll describe for you. I personally would not be able to do that. So it's really helpful in this case. Oftentimes, not perfect. So we're going to keep going through this process. But when we run this, you, we'll run all four of these, and we'll see what happens. So that's our original image on the left. Then on the right over here are the four described prompts that we just ran. So when you look at this, maybe some people would say, that's good. I look at that and say, that's kind of crap. Right? Like it doesn't look anything like that image. They're all super AI looking, polished, weird. Um, so what are we going to do here? Now we're going to keep going on this step of the process, and we're going to take this prompt into ChatGPT. So this is essentially a two-step prompt here. Now what we're doing is we're going to take that image, that first image of the F1 car, the original one from Red Bull, we're going to paste it into ChatGPT, and we're going to ask it to analyze the image. What we want to do is create a prompt for an AI generator. I'm going to read this prompt you know, somewhat verbatim here. But describe the image like an like award-winning professional photographer and in the extreme technical detail. The goal here, we want to take out as much of that technical detail and extract as much as possible. The stuff that we don't know, that I don't know. I don't know an aperture, or a lens type, things like that. So then we'll also use this formula to structure the prompt. So we'll use the prompt uh, structure that we used earlier. We'll include specific technical details, camera lenses, things like that, and we want to stay away from using long sentences. So we run that prompt. What will happen is it'll give you a really nice, synthesized, more robust prompt than we had before. So the second prompt we're going to utilize is basically we're going to blend these two prompts together. So the one that ChatGPT generated and the one that MidJourney generated, we're going to plug them both together, have ChatGPT remix it, and then you can also ask it to provide different variations if you need it. So when that happens, this is what our new prompt looks like, right? Panning shot, Red Bull racing car, dark indigo and amber. So we got the color scheme. We got a lot more technical detail. You know, we have dappled sunlight, bold contrast, delicate precision. Like this is stuff that I'm not going to be able to create on my own. Like I could, I could try to describe that prompt or that image, but it's never going to look like this. So that's why we use ChatGPT to help. Now, when we run that, this is what it looks like. So again, is it good? Yes. Is it there yet? No. Like, this is close. This looks way more photorealistic than the options we just had. And, like, there's just, there's just something missing, right? Like, the composition's not there. Like, the, the life isn't there. It still looks kind of AI to me. So what do we do next? This is image prompting. So image prompting, when we, there we go. So image prompting, what happens here? Think of image prompting as taking a photo and text and prompting them together and blending it. So we're going to take that original photo that we had of the Red Bull racing car, then we're going to take that prompt that we just generated in ChatGPT, add them into the same prompt bar, hit enter. So 
The good thing about this is if you've used ChatGPT and you've used it like in a pretty consistent fashion, it's just like you're doing the same process here. Like you're giving Midjourney inspiration. So the same thing as ChatGPT when you would give it data and ask it to basically generate off of that data, this is the same process. So this is our results. Now, I think we nailed it. This is pretty damn close. This is about as close as it's gonna get. So we took that image, we broke it down into individual parts. Now we can build it back out, right? Like we built the visual signature. And this is where it starts to get interesting, right? Now all you have to do is iterate. So think about that prompt that we just talked about, right? Like the panning, you know, the panning shot, Red Bull racing car, then all the technical details. All you have to do now, instead of just going and rewriting a new prompt, is take that technical piece, take the color scheme, take all of that. All you have to switch is the subject. So in these, I used the same exact prompt. All I did was change it to motorcycle instead of Red Bull racing car. I changed it to motorbike or dune buggy or skier. So as you can see, it's able to do this in five seconds. This isn't a professional photo shoot. Right, this took me less than 10 minutes. Now I can take this and scale these and get maybe like 40 different variations of these. So it's infinite in terms of what you can do. Right, so that's the original on the left. And then that's what we came up with on the right. Those are the hacked assets. Like I said, I think we did pretty good. Like that, the dune buggies are almost, you know, uh, you can't even tell the difference. So what we've done here is just opened up the possibility to just create these new types of assets at volume.